Thank you for tuning in today. We are going to get this red cat marksman ready for crawling. And what I want to do today is show you how to switch out the battery plug if you need to, and also program the ESE to something that I think is a little bit more unique for crawling. So the first thing we're going to run through today is programming the Hobbywing 1080 ESC to have a little bit more ideal setting for crawling. And out of the box, it certainly would crawl as good as most people would want. However, I do believe that we can tune it up just a little bit. Now, what I have here on this cheat sheet is essentially running down the list of the values that I would have for each of the items. And I'm going to do that right here, right now. So the first thing you need to do is plug this little extension into your program card. It's going to be on the, if you're looking at it, the right side plug hole on top. It's also going to have a little, oh, a digital signal symbol. The white wire is your signal. Uh, you could also look at it and it's pretty small, but there is uh, in this direction a little minus sign inside of a circle and that denotes our negative. So our black wire is going to be our negative and it doesn't matter which way you plug it in. The center wire is always going to be your positive. So there is a program port on the ESC and it has the same symbols on there. So our little uh, square wave, our digital signal line is going to be the white wire on this. And the next step is to plug that in with the white wire facing towards the inside of the ESC, the black wire, more towards the outside. The next thing we will need is a battery. We got to boot up the ESC. So we plug that guy in. I just happen to have one pack left with Dean's plugs, so I haven't swapped that out yet. I have already taken the heat shrink off of this particular battery. Not smart if you want to avoid dead shorts. And then we press the power button. The way that the programming works is that you press the item on the program box, just as you can see, and it cycles through all of the different items and the values. So it looks like I think 15 different items that there can be, and we're just going to run right through them. Number one item, running mode. What we want for crawling is the third mode, forward to reverse no mode. No brakes. No uh, forward brakes, nothing like that. We want it to instantly go into reverse because if you're on a ledge and you're starting to fall over backwards, you want to be able to get out of it without your rig tumbling backwards down the hill. So uh, item one, value number three, as it shows on the cheat sheet. Whenever you change a value on here, you have to hit the OK button for it to actually be stored. So actually, I'm going to just hit the reset. It's going to put them all to factory values, I think. Let's see. Yep, okay, uh, that, that resets back to the first item on there. So that's how it works. All right, item number one, value number three. On to the next. Item number two, battery type, LiPo, value number one. We're running LiPo packs, so we want that. I'll hit OK. Then I'll go to the next. Item three, value three. That is our cutoff voltage, auto medium. That sounds great. Let's hit OK, and let's hit the item. Initial start force. All right, uh, this is set to a number three from the factory. I want to bring this down to number one. It gives us more improved startup. So there we go. Gonna hit OK. Now we we'll go to number five, max forward force. Item number four is 100%. We want full throttle in forward, so we hit OK. We go to the next. Item number six, max reverse force. I like 100%, and that's gonna be a number four on there, 100%. So we go value number four, hit OK. Item number seven, max brake force. So since we have drag brake on this, most people don't even use the brakes. It is set to 100% stock. That should be just fine. And we'll double check on the sheet. There we go, that's what we want. Now, item number eight. This is the initial brake force. If we were using brakes, this would be how much you can feather the brakes as it kicks on. If you want stronger brakes, you would increase the value. We got drag brake, so we're probably never going to use this. So uh, one is fine. On to the next. Uh, item number nine, drag brake. Make sure I have this. Yeah, so we want the maximum amount. Item number nine, value number nine. That is what I got on my cheat sheet. That's what it says on the back. So we hit OK and we go to the next. Item number 10, drag brake rate. This is essentially how hard the drag brake kicks on at first. Uh, something uh, mid-range is a pretty good starting. Uh, let's see, so value number four, let's see what we got on the cheat sheet. Value number four, looks good. 
Item number 11, neutral range. Their stock setting, the value number four, is good enough. If you have issues with an arming or uh, cheaper radios, sometimes you may want to open this up. And to open up the neutral range, you would use a larger value on this. So I'm going to stick with number four on here. It uh, seems to be a good setting. And then we hit the item number to go to the next. Item number 12, start mode and punch. So this is essentially when you grab the trigger how fast that the rig will accelerate more of this makes it a uh, punchier system less of this makes it less punchy a much more controlled startup if you're handing this off to a kid you're probably going to want it in a lower mode just so they don't break parts if you are the type of guy that has big batteries and you know your setup very well you may want to set this all the way up it is set at number five, which is about midway up in there. And let's see what I have on here. Item number 12, five. It's, it seems to be a pretty good setting uh, for most setups. It'll also, if you, if you use this middle of the range value, it'll keep you from damaging your brushed motors by grabbing throttle too fast and then having the brushes arc. Um, not really necessary on all motors. The cheaper motors uh, tend to be better in this regard. More expensive motors will pull more current and you will blow the brushes up if you treat it as uh, you know, as a disposable motor. So just a heads up there. Stock setting, value number five, that seems to be good all around for now. Next item, and item number 13, PWM frequency. This comes set at the number four value, which is 8K out of the factory. And I would suggest either a value of four or five for this. So the value number four is actually audible. Most people can hear it. It's not gonna be very loud with this motor though. Once you have the body on, it's really not that big of a deal. If you want to have a completely silent rig, then you would go to value number five, which is I think a 16K switching frequency. Yep, 16K. The downside to going to the inaudible frequency is that you, you lose some low speed control actually. It, it, it starts up a little bit jerky. And with this particular motor, it is actually noticeable. So I'm gonna keep mine on a value number four. It's not so loud that it bothers me on the trail by any means. And a lot of people, you probably can't even hear it. Uh, depends on how old you are. It's, one of those things that the, the hearing goes away in that frequency as you get older. So there we go. I'm going to stick with value number four for item 13, which is our PWM frequency. Next one, item number 14. This is our BEC voltage. It comes stock at six volts. You can set it to 7.4 volts. You will get more torque out of your servo if you set it at 7.4 volts. However, you might also make your servo go bad. I have not put enough testing in this vehicle to know whether that servo was okay at the higher voltage. So I'm going to leave this at value number one. Maybe this is something down the road that we'll be able to test more, or you can test it out for yourself and let me know in the comments what you think. All right. So we hit okay. And then we go to item number 15. This is freewheeling. There's not much explanation on what this means online. So I will just tell you you want freewheeling enabled. This does not mean that when you're pointing downhill that your rig is gonna freewheel. What this is actually talking about is active freewheeling mode, AKA synchronous rectification. Uh, there's a whole host of other terms that we could call it on, but when you are giving a slight amount of throttle and you're pointing downhill, having freewheel on will make it to where it keeps drag brake on at the same time as you are giving it a little bit of throttle. We want synchronous rectification. We want active rectification. We want active drag brake, however you want to call it. So we're going to make that item number 15 be of one value on the program where we are turning on freewheeling. That is a good thing. And so now we can run back through Looks good, looks good, looks good. Make sure all our values were saved. Four, four, nine, one, nine, four, four, five, four or five, one or two, and one. We're good. So at that point, we just unplug our battery, unplug our program box, and we are ready to rock with more control than what this would have been set from the factory. Now, the only other thing that I really need to change is this battery plug. While Dean's uh, style T-plugs are very ubiquitous in the industry, I think a lot of people have switched to XT60s at this point, including myself. So I'm just gonna do a little quick solder job here. Join along with me while hopefully I don't have too much troubles. I'm gonna use this third hand just because I don't really feel like beating my head into a wall soldering in midair today. So that's what we're gonna do or that's what we're not going to do let me know in the comments so we got this nice 
A-U-E, I can't remember how to say it anymore, you're gonna have to tell me. Uh, I-U, I-U-A, 9378, love this soldering iron. I got the slightly beefier tip on here. It shouldn't make much work of this. It should make quick work. So if you've seen me in previous videos, I really talk about not putting solder directly on the tip. It will eat your tip away over time. It's not really a good idea. However, to get your first thermal transfer going, it's a good idea. Let's see, are we on, uh, yeah, we're even on the overhead camera. How about that? So a little bit of heat on one side. They probably use leaded solder. We'll see how, uh, we'll see how much heat this takes. Maybe they didn't use leaded solder. Wonder what the over under is on that. All right, so we gotta add some more. Um, while it will deteriorate your tip very quickly, what we have found out in the shop is that, well, we're doing production work in the shop, and so we've actually just been soldering the tip, just just straight up solder right on that tip, because we, uh, you know, we kind of have time constraints on it, and the cost of new tips versus the cost of being extra, extra careful to not put any solder on the tip so that we don't pit it out. Well, you know how things work, time value of money, and it is much more valuable for our time to just waste those tips. And I will tell you, after the first week of doing that, I, I ruined the tip. And I wasn't soldering for more than uh, maybe 10 hours that week. But it, nonetheless, it happened. And uh, it is something to look out for. If you are at home and you're not in a big hurry, I would still suggest not putting solder directly on your tips. In particular, the uh, flux core, lead free. If you're using leaded solder, the temperature of your iron is not gonna be so much that it really matters. But if you're using, I think I said that right, if you're using leaded solder, the temperature of your iron won't be so high that it really matters. But for lead free, boy, that flux sure does eat away. All right, I am going to pre-tin our little cup here. And we're just gonna, we're gonna shove that right on the iron. Yes, sir. Go get it done fast. Then we heat up both items. Get that wire in the cup real nice there. Excellent. And for ease, I'm just gonna flip this around, put it back in, and maybe I'll get it a little bit closer. Ooh, boy. You know, this, uh, this magnifying glass really isn't so useful. It's just, it's just more top heavy than anything else. So same as last time, we're gonna pre-tin this cup. Shove our wire in there, get both items hot and melted. Oh yeah, perfect. There we are. And since this was an XT60, instead of using heat shrink, I just got these little shrouds that kind of clip on there. And let's see if I did a good enough job to where it'll still clip on. Woo, hot. Should be good. And I usually like to get a little, little something to help me pop those on. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it completely destroys the plug. And it looks like it's trying to destroy the plug, so I'm gonna just shove it on the table. Maybe that'll work. There we go, that worked. There we go, XT60, and I got my polarity right even. Ha, ah, yes, always double check your polarity. I've been doing this uh, you know, RC thing for decades at this point, and every now and then I still accidentally put the polarity in wrong. So don't beat yourself up if that happens to you. And now, now, this thing fits a full-size pack, so you know what we're gonna put in here? A full-size pack. All right, once I get this Velcro one done, there we are. And we'll strap them wires down, there we go. Let's turn on our radio first and make sure that this thing crawls. Make sure I didn't blow anything up. 
Press our power button, power buttons. One, two, three. Armed. And oh yeah, she's a going. So reverse is a little touchier than forwards. I wonder if this is a 70-30 transmitter. And once this gets loaded down, it'll, it'll be even slower. And our wheel speed, just enough for a crawler. Be able to bump up over those objects. All right, so we are set. The next video, we're gonna take her out on the rocks and ring it out a little bit. Hope this helped you out for today. This will get you programmed if you need to swap anything out or if you needed to know what the programming actually means. Hopefully it did you some good. If you do have any other questions, be sure to leave them down below. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.